So in 8.4, we're going to look at another technique for solving integrals. And the focus of this section is to try to eliminate square roots, because they tend to give us a lot of problems. We're going to look at three types. The first type would be an expression that looks like a squared minus x squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace x with a times sine of theta. So let's just look at this example one. In the integrand, I have a 9 minus x squared, which means a is equal to 3. And then I'm going to let x equal 3 times sine of theta. The goal will be to build up this expression so it looks like 9 minus x squared. So x squared is 9 sine squared of theta. And then if I take 9 minus x squared on the right hand side, I have 9 minus 9 sine squared of theta. So let's go ahead and factor out the 9 on the right-hand side to get 1 minus sine squared theta. So notice I can replace that with cosine squared. And then in my integrand, it becomes the integral of 1 over 9 minus x squared becomes, in parentheses, 9 cosine squared theta to the 3 halves. Okay. But now I need to replace my dx and write everything in terms of the variable theta. So going back to my x, dx is going to be equal to 3 cosine of theta d theta. So I can replace the dx in my original integrand with 3 cosine of theta d theta. Okay. So everything's in terms of theta now. We can go ahead and simplify the integrand. Notice that the square on the cosine and the square in the exponent, they're going to cancel. So this just becomes cosine cubed in the denominator. And then 9 to the 3 halves will simplify as well. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do some simplifying. 9 to the 3 halves, that would be the square root of 9 is 3, and 3 cubed is 27. So my integral is going to be 3 cosine of theta over 27 cosine cubed of theta d theta. And then pulling out the 3 over 27, or rather 1 9th, And then simplifying the cosine top and bottom, I'll have 1 over cosine squared theta d theta. Okay, so that's a nice strategy to use if you want to get rid of a square root. I don't know what 1 over cosine squared is um, when I integrate, but I do know what the integral of secant squared is. 
and that would just be tangent. So I have 1 9th tangent of theta plus my constant c. Problem is, I started out with x's, not theta. So I'm going to have to replace uh, theta with something in terms of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our original expression, x is equal to 3 sine theta. Okay, And what that will give me when I solve for sine of theta is x over 3 is equal to sine of theta. Okay. So now, what is theta? Well, I simply have to drop myself a right triangle. And again, I'm not that good at drawing right triangles. I guess that's not that bad. So with respect to this angle theta, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be x over the hypotenuse is 3. And then Pythagorean formula allows me to complete this and write the square root of 9 minus x squared, which coincidentally is what we started in the bottom of our integrand. So now I can go ahead and replace tangent of theta, because remember that tangent is opposite over adjacent, and this becomes 1 ninth times opposite is x over the adjacent, which is the square root of 9 minus x squared, plus my constant c. Okay, so just cleaning that up a little bit, we have x over 9 times the square root of 9 minus x squared, plus our constant c. And so let's go ahead and try another example. Let's look at what happens when we have the a squared plus the x squared. So if it's an a squared plus x squared, our substitution is going to be tangent. And in example 2, our a is going to be equal to, sorry, a is equal to 2. So we're going to let x equal 2 tangent of theta. So again, my goal here is to build up. So I have 4 plus x squared. Okay. Well, I know that x squared is going to be 4 tangent squared of theta. So 4 plus x squared is going to be 4 plus 4 tangent squared theta. And now factoring out the 4, I have 1 plus tangent squared theta, which is secant squared. And now I have an expression squared when I replace this in my integrand. Uh, also notice here in my numerator, x squared is 4 tangent squared. So numerator becomes 4 times tangent squared theta over the square root of 4 secant squared theta. But now I need my d theta. So again, going back to my original expression and taking the derivative on both sides, I get the derivative with respect to x is going to be now the derivative of tangent is secant squared. This would be 2 secant squared d theta. And that's what I would substitute my dx with. 2 secant squared theta d theta. So let's go ahead and do some simplifying. Okay, uh, Underneath in the square root, it, that just becomes 2 secant. So this is the integral of 4 tangent squared 
theta times 2 secant squared theta over 2 secant theta d theta. And you can see that a lot will cancel. Inside the inner ground, why don't I take out the 4? The 2's will cancel, right? And the secant on the bottom will cancel. So my inner ground's just going to be tangent squared of theta, secant theta, and then our d theta. So going back to the previous section, I can replace my tangent squared with secant squared minus 1. This becomes the integral of secant squared theta minus 1 times secant of theta d theta. And if I distribute that secant, I get secant cubed of theta minus secant of theta d theta. Well, I don't know what secant cubed is, but I do know what the integral of secant is, or do I? So what we could do is we could use the reduction formula on just this first part here. So why don't I go ahead and split this up? Okay, this is 4 times the integral of secant cubed theta d theta minus 4 times the integral of secant of theta d theta. And this first part by the reduction formula is going to be 4 secant tangent over 2 Again, I'm using the reduction formula here, plus 1 half times 4, so it's going to be 4 over 2, which will turn into 2, uh, integral of secant of theta d to theta. Okay, and I still have this minus 4 integral secant, oops, secant theta d theta. Okay. So 2 secant theta tangent theta. Now when I combine these like terms here, right, same integral, it would be plus 2 minus 4. I'm going to get a minus 2 integral of secant of theta d theta. And again, from a previous section, we have the integral of secant is going to be 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of secant plus tangent. So this is 2 times secant of theta tangent of theta minus 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta and our constant c. Now my focus in this section is on indefinite integrals. Definite integrals, remember, are going to be exactly the same. You just have to um, do your limits of integration. Okay, so I'm kind of stuck here because I started out evaluating integrals with respect to x, and now I'm down to thetas. So I need to drop a right triangle, 
going back to my original substitution, which was x is equal to 2 tangent of theta. That means x over 2 is equal to tangent of theta. And if we go ahead and drop a right triangle, where theta is respect to tangent, we would have opposite over adjacent. Our hypotenuse ends up being 4 plus x squared all underneath a square root. And now I can use that relationship to go back down to where I was at in my integral and now replace my thetas. So secant is, what is, it's the reciprocal of cosine. So if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So it's gonna be two times the hypotenuse, uh, four plus x squared, over the adjacent to the angle, which is two, times tangent, that was x over two, minus two times the natural log of the absolute value of secant, which again is the square root of four plus x squared over two, plus tangent, that would be x over two, and then now it's just a matter of cleaning this up. So my twos will cancel. And I can bring this together as x times the square root of 4 plus x squared over 2 minus uh, 2 times the natural log. So in the absolute values, my fractions have the same denominator, so it's just as easy for me to bring it together and write 4 plus x squared plus x all over 2 plus c. And then if you want to play around with it some more, uh, you can, but this is fine. Our goal was to write everything in terms of x, and we've done that. And so we've looked at two types. And we're finally going to look at the third type. So we had a squared minus x squared. And then we had a squared plus x squared. And now the last example we're going to look at is going to be x squared minus a squared. So our substitution on x is going to be secant. In example one, a is three. I keep doing that. A is equal to three. And we're going to let x equal three secant of theta. So again, we're going to build up to replace the x squared minus 9 underneath this square root. So I know that x squared minus 9 is going to be 9 secant squared theta minus 9. And then this will become... 9 times tangent squared theta. And my integral is going to be the square root of 9 tangent squared theta over x, which is 3 secant of theta times, now we have to figure out our d theta, right? but we know that dx is equal to the derivative of 3 secant theta is going to be 3 secant theta tangent theta. And then we have d theta. So 3 c 
secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. Huh, it looks like a lot of stuff will cancel. The three secants, and then underneath the square root, the square root of nine tangent squared will just be three tangent. So I have the integral of three tangent theta times tangent of theta d theta. I'm going to pull out the 3, and now I have the integral of tangent squared of theta d theta. And I don't know what the antiderivative for that is. So maybe if I replace that with something with secant squared, it'll help me because I know what the antiderivative of secant squared is. It's just tangent. So I'm going to rewrite my integrand as secant squared minus 1. Okay, and then do theta. This becomes 3. times the tangent of theta minus theta plus my constant c. Again, I start out with, um, I, I was supposed to integrate with respect to x, and now I have these thetas. Going to drop myself a right triangle and use that x is 3 secant theta which gives me x over 3 is equal to secant of theta. And my right triangle with respect to the angle theta. So secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So it's going to be x over 3 with respect to theta. So the remaining side should be square root of x squared minus 9, which was exactly what we had in our original integrand underneath the square root. All right, so this becomes 3. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Square root of x squared minus 9 over 3. And now I have a problem. How do I replace theta? Okay, so just to be consistent, note that I have tangent of theta So remember, tangent of theta is equal to, which we just figured out, right? Square root of x squared minus 9 over 3. Okay, so I know that theta is equal to tangent inverse of the square root of x squared minus 9 over 3. Again, I just figured out what tangent of theta is, and I can use that to replace theta with tangent inverse. All right, so now we got rid of theta. And maybe I want to go ahead and multiply through by that 3 on the outside because I can see that these 3's would cancel. So it might be nicer to get rid of the bracket and just write the square root of x squared minus 9 minus 3 times tangent inverse of the argument here is x squared, square root of x squared minus 9 over 3. And then plus my constant. Okay, well, let's look at the last example. 
And the last example has nothing to do with the three that we did before, at least not yet. This is an example where we're going to have to do a preliminary step. And remember, the whole point of this section is to be able to evaluate integrals that we haven't been able to evaluate up until this point. So if we look at something that has sort of um, a quadratic form, ax squared plus bx plus c, sometimes it helps if we complete the square. And then maybe we can do some sort of substitution that'll help us evaluate our integral. So example four, I can't actually evaluate this integral the way it's written. I could try a u substitution on the denominator, but that won't work because I'll still end up with an expression that has both x's and u's. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square on the denominator x squared plus 6x plus 18. So really what I'm looking at is the x squared plus the 6x. What would I need to have in order for that to be a perfect square? So I don't know if you remember how we figure that out when we complete the square. We take half of the 6, which is 3, and we square that, right? So we have 9. So x squared plus 6x plus 9 is a perfect square. But I had a plus 18. So I'm just splitting up that 18 into a plus 9 plus 9. Where the first part factors as x plus 3 quantity squared. Okay, so I'm going to replace what's inside the parentheses by doing a u substitution. I'm going to let u equal x plus 3. So my du is equal to dx. And now in my integral, It'll be the integral of 1 over, remember it was x plus 3 quantity squared plus 9 dx. But now that I've done my u substitution, this is the integral of 1 over u squared plus 9 du. And if I choose to, I can replace the u squared plus 9 with, is this a tangent substitution? So let's say I want to let u equal 3 tangent of theta. So the u squared plus 9 is going to be 9 tangent squared theta plus 9, and that would be 9 secant squared. My integral is going to be 1 over 9 secant squared theta but what is my du? Okay. So if u is 3 tangent theta, then du is going to be 3 secant squared theta d theta. So du is 3 secant squared theta d theta. Well, that's really nice because pretty much everything cancels except for one third. And the integral of one third is, with respect to theta, 
one third theta plus our constant C. So at this point, I could just drop a right triangle, but I really don't have to. Going back to the substitution on U, I know that U over 3 is equal to tangent of theta, which means that theta is equal to tangent inverse of u over 3. So I actually didn't have to draw a right triangle. I can just go straight into replacing theta with tangent inverse of u over 3 plus my constant c. Again, remember, we started with x, not u. So the final step here would be to replace u with x plus 3. So 1 third tangent inverse of x plus 3 over 3, and then plus our constant c. And that is done. Okay, so that's it for 8.4.